All right, so that's one method of finding the center of a part, drilling a hole, using an edge finder. Now, let's take a look at, again, another type of setup and the complications that it may afford in a machining operation. Let's take a look at the use of a secondary vise clamped in our primary vise. This is our little toolmaker's vise that we talked about earlier. We've got a piece of 11L17 bar stock mounted in it, and the customers requested that we cut a 30 degree sloping angle on the end of these parts. Apparently it's some kind of a key slide that he is using in the manufacture of another part, and he needs a precise angle machined on that. So by grasping the part in the vise, we're simply going to set it in our other vise and use what is called an angle block. This is a precision ground block at 30 degrees. We're simply going to set it in underneath the vise jaws here and set our vise on top of it. Okay, Make sure that it sets nice and flat underneath here. It's just a little gauge spacer block is all we're setting it on to dictate the angle of our vise. Okay. Just seat our vise with the heel of our hand, go back and loosen it up, check it, make sure everything's fine, give it the final tightening operation. Now we're going to be machining a piece of steel now. Up till now we've been machining aluminum. So we're going to want to adjust the speed and feed rate because we're dealing with a little bit harder material. We also have a lot of material exposed out of the vise, so that's something that we need to keep in mind as well. We want to take some relatively light cuts as we surface across the top of our part. We're going to raise our table up, giving us a good rigid cutter position. You can see that we've choked the cutter up pretty far in the collet. We don't have a lot of exposed cutter protruding down from our collet. It's a half inch diameter collet in steel. Let's go ahead and adjust our speed now to 660 RPM. If we were taking light cuts, we can probably cut it at 11. 115, but 660 is a little bit better speed for what we're doing. Okay. <clears throat> Bring our cutter down. We're going to lock the quill down and index the cutter just over the edge of the part. We're going to raise the mill bed until we just come in contact with it. Back the cutter away. We're going to take about 50 thousandths at a pass. Very gently advance the cutter across the part. Okay. Take another pass. Again, listen to the machine. We've got a nice smooth sound as the cutter is working across the part. It's not going clackety clackety clack indicating that we're machining at too high of an RPM or too fast of a feed rate. Okay, when you have a lot of material exposed, as in this case, we want to have a very slow feed rate. We don't want to hob across it really quick, tearing the part from the vise. Okay, we're just about there. And remember, this is kind of a climb operation relative to the top edge of the part. We're removing the burr off in this process. Index our cutter over. Come across it for the second pass. Okay, about another 20,000, so I ought to do it. You can also watch the chip color. You can see the chips are coming off in a nice shiny color. They're not turning straw or blue color, again, indicating too high of an RPM or too fast of a feed rate. We're not using any cutting fluid on this particular job. We're machining a leaded type material that machines really well. Okay, there you have it. We've surfaced that at 30 degrees done a real nice job. We've showed you a little different type of material now. That was a piece of steel, 11L17. Nice piece of free machining leaded steel. Got to turn it on the side there and you can see the angle that we've machined on it. So you can see the versatility of having a couple of vices around and how to mount them in our main vise on the table.